This is part 30 of Bootstrap tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss Bootstrap pager and pagination components. First, let's see how to create a simple Bootstrap pager with previous and next buttons as you can see here. Let's flip to Visual Studio now. To create a pager, we create an unordered list and set its class to pager. And inside this unordered list, we are going to create two list items, one for the previous button and the other one is for the next button. And inside each list item, we are going to nest an anchor element. And for now, let's set its href attribute to hash. The text on the previous link is going to be previous and the text on the next link is going to be next. Let's save our changes. And when we reload the page, notice we get a pager with previous and next links. What's missing here is the left and right arrows. To get those arrows, we are going to use ampersand L A R R semicolon. L stands for left, A R R stands for arrow. So this is going to give us left arrow. As you might have guessed by now, to get the right arrow, we use ampersand R A R R semicolon R standing for right A R R standing for arrow so we get the right arrow let's save our changes and when we reload this page notice we get the left and right arrows as expected and here is the HTML which we have just seen now let's discuss some of the useful pager classes by default the pager links are positioned at the center of their container in this example, the container is the page itself. So notice the previous and next links are positioned at the center of the page. Instead, if you want the previous link on the left-hand side of the page and the next link on the right-hand side of the page, then use previous and next classes. Let's look at them in action. So on this previous list item, let's use the previous class. And on the next list item, let's use next class. Let's see what changes. Reload the page. Notice the links are aligned as expected. To disable either the previous or next link, use the disabled class. Let's look at this in action. So on this previous list item, along with the previous class, let's also use the disabled class. When we reload this page, notice the style of this previous link changes. Also, when we hover the mouse over this disabled previous link, look at the cursor style. It changes to a stop sign indicating that this previous link is disabled and cannot be clicked. But one thing to keep in mind is that the link functionality still exists. So if we click on this, notice at the moment the href attribute value is hash. So when we click on the previous link here, the URL changes. So that means the link functionality still exists. Now, to remove the link functionality, replace this anchor element with a span element. Let's do that now. So I'm going to change this to a span and let's get rid of this href attribute. Let's save our changes, reload our page. Let's remove this hash from the URL. And look at this, when I click on this previous link now, we don't get that hash in the URL, meaning the link functionality is removed as expected. Let's now discuss how to create a pagination bar with numbers as you can see here. Let's flip to Visual Studio. To create a pagination bar with numbers, we create an unordered list with its class set to pagination. Within the unordered list, let's create a list item. Within the list item, let's nest an anchor element and set its href attribute to hash. Let's make six more copies of this list item. On the first link within the pagination bar, we want this symbol right here. So to get that symbol, we are going to use ampersand L A Q U O semicolon. And on the last link, we want this symbol right here. So to get that symbol, we are going to use ampersand R A Q U O. And on the rest of the links right here, we want numbers. So on this link, we want number one, on this two, on this three, so on and so forth. Let's see what changes. Reload the page. Notice we get the pagination bar with numbers as expected. Here is the HTML. Now, 
Let's discuss some of the useful pagination classes. Active. This class is used to indicate the current page that you are on. Let's say for example at the moment we are on page number 3 and we want to style that link differently. So on this list item let's use the active class. Let's save our changes and when we reload our page notice the link 3 is styled differently. Also when I hover the mouse over it the cursor style does not change to a hand symbol indicating that we cannot click this. Whereas when I hover the mouse over any of the other links it changes to a hand symbol. Now let's discuss the disabled class. This class is used to disable a page number in the pagination bar. Let's say for example we want to disable this link right here. So on that respective list item we are going to use disabled class. Let's save our changes, reload the page and look at this. When I have the mouse over the cursor style changes indicating that this link is disabled. Now let's discuss pagination LG and SM classes. LG stands for large, SM stands for small. So these two classes are used for creating large and small pagination bars respectively. Let's look at them in action. Now to demonstrate those two classes, I'm actually going to make two more copies of this unordered list. On the first unordered list, I'm going to use pagination LG class along with the pagination class. And on the last unordered list, let's use pagination SM class. And on the second unordered list, we are not using any of these two classes. So it's going to use the default size. So let's see our changes. And when we reload this page, notice we get three pagination bars with three different sizes. Thank you for listening and have a great day.